<sighs> okay, so here's a new ROG laptop that we get to unbox here today at the office. So this isn't any ROG laptop, but this is the latest ROG Zephyrus S that comes with an Intel 9th gen Core i7 processor inside with a RTX 2070. Now, this is a pretty high-end laptop that we are unboxing today. So without further ado, I'm not going to waste any time on admiring this box. It's nice, of course. There's an ROG branding right at the front. So let's check out what's inside. First thing that we see inside the box is a backpack an ROG backpack. And this is a brand new laptop that we are unboxing. Mind you, it's a brand new one. It's not being opened by anyone because look at this thing. It is sealed. It's, it is sealed and this box looks really good. Look at it. There's even a cutout right here. And you know, we're gonna get to that later and we're gonna check out the final um, details inside the box, which is this big box over here, which I zoom. This is a power break right inside. There you go. There is the ROG Zephyrus S power break. It's a pretty standard one, it's not too heavy, which is kind of surprising for a RTX 2070 laptop. So, and finally we have the cable, of course, and that's pretty much about the box and that's what you get inside the packaging of the ROG Zephyrus S's box. One, two, three, go. And there you go. The laptop comes out and you basically take it out of the box just like this. The very first time that I'm so excited about such kind of unboxing. Another box right under here. And okay, so you get the standard uh, me mechanical sculpture that you, we, we used to see in the previous ROG laptop unboxing. And we have the usual paperwork inside this box here, which we probably don't even need to read it if we don't find any trouble with the laptop. The ROG Zephyrus as um, GX, this is the, the GX502G model that we are getting right here. Fast enough, and there you go. This is the ROG Zephyrus S. Pretty cool. Um, not the most heaviest uh, gaming laptop. It's pretty light as a gaming laptop. It's a 15.6 inch display that um, we are seeing right here. There you go. All the branding over here, there's a G-Sync on this. There's a 144 hertz, three millisecond response time. There's the ESS sound chip right inside. A Pantone certified display. Wow, that's amazing. For a gaming laptop, I think this is very much the first gaming laptop that I'm seeing with a Pantone certified display, which means color accuracy is definitely a selling point on this. So for a gaming laptop, I think the ROG Zephyrus S looks pretty nice on its design. I mean, I've always loved how the Zephyrus looks like because it doesn't look too flashy and it has this really nice premium brush metal finishing on the front here that make it less like a gaming laptop. And of course, this ROG branding will light up once you turn on the laptop and I believe it is customizable using uh, ASUS's Aura RGB software. Okay, so let's talk about the IOs. So on the right side of the laptop, you get to standard USB-A port, a USB 3.1 Gen 2 uh, port, I believe. And here you get a USB-C port, which unfortunately it doesn't support Thunderbolt 3, which is a shame, you know, because most high-end gaming laptops like this would already have Thunderbolt 3 included and Asus still doesn't include it. I have no idea why. So on the left here, so you get the standard uh, DC port for charging and that's a RG45 gigabit LAN, HDMI, uh, standard USB-A port again and separate ports for audio and microphone. One thing is missing, there's no SD card. Why ASUS of so many laptops out there? I mean, this is a high-end laptop but you do not have an SD card reader or neither even a Thunderbolt 3 port. What's up with this? All right, so enough of the rants on the ports and so on. Let's open this up. Look at this screen. It's just a beautiful display. It doesn't turn on yet, of course, but looking at the bezels itself, it's actually pretty slim. Uh, there's of course a thick bezel around here, which I kind of find it a little unnecessary. And you know what? There's no webcam on this thing. There's totally no webcam on this thing. So you gotta buy, attach a separate webcam to it if you want to do streaming or doing video conference. And this is the keyboard. Looks uh, pretty similar across other ROG Zephyrus uh, laptops. 
feels pretty nice to tie on. So as I lift up the screen, there is actually an open vent, open uh, slot over here that actually improves the air intake. So once it improves, once it takes in air from these two vents over here, it will ventilate heat out of the four ventilation ports. So here we go. This is the first ventilation shaft, and there's two more on the back and the other one on the right. So there's total of four ventilation shafts that it can ventilate heat out of this laptop. So cooling on this, I'm expecting this to perform pretty well for a ROG Zephyrus laptop. The trackpad here, um, not too surprising, is not the largest trackpad that we have seen, but over the, you know, over the past a couple of months that we have been, I've been checking a couple of Zephyrus R R ROG laptops, their trackpad has been pretty good. They are using Windows Precision drivers, so they don't screw up any of your, you know, operations on Windows itself. And we are going to press the power on button. There you go, it's turned on. Expect like a zing sound. Is it going to happen? There you go. It's turned on. I spent around 10 minutes playing with this thing after setting up all the prerequisites on Windows 10. And I have to say that my first impressions on this is pretty good. Even though Asus didn't include things like Thunderbolt 3 or an SD card reader on this thing, which I think they should have been doing so. But then this is a pretty decent laptop if you're thinking to purchase this as a gaming laptop or your creator's laptop. So I'll talk about the screen first of all. So. The screen, yes, it is a Pantone validated screen. Um, in terms of the colors, you do find that it is a lot more accurate than any other gaming laptops that we have seen with a 144Hz panel. But the thing about this is that it only displays 8-bit colors. So if you are a person who does a lot of color grading jobs and you need to see more colors, you will still need to attach this laptop to an external monitor to show more colors on your work to get the best result. Otherwise, I would say that the colors on this thing is definitely one of the best panels that I've seen on a gaming laptop. All right, so um, the next thing that I really like is the keyboard. So I briefly mentioned about it, but after playing for a while, I do realize that ASUS has actually done a great job on the keyboard layout, starting with the function keys on the top. So from F1 to F12, you do find that it is separated into three different rows so that um, you won't accidentally touch them if you want to access these function keys and it's great. And there is a there are two function buttons over here. One is on the left side and the other one is on the right. Uh, and I especially I find the right side function, the dedicated function key here pretty convenient to touch and it's a good thing. So you get your standard uh, volume controls on the top. Even there's a microphone mute button right here and this one gets you into Asus's Armory Create software and you do, you do get this signature uh, space bar right here, which looks pretty nice. And over here, the directional keys, um, I find them a little bit small to my liking, but I think it's good. It's not oversized like I've seen it on the Asus Tough Gaming Laptop, which is a little bit too huge and it even creates like a separate row down over there. But I would say that these directional keys are actually pretty good. And when it comes to the trackpad, I think the trackpad uh, has very good precision. It's using Windows precision drivers. That's why you definitely feel you can definitely use this trackpad to do all your dragging, your gestures, and so on. It will do very well. Things that I don't like about this laptop, apart from the ports that I mentioned just now, um, it would be the palm rest over here. So this palm rest, it's a pretty rough texture, and you know it's something that it might not welcome sweaty palms. So if you Put on your, if you have sweaty palms, if you happen to rest your palm on this, uh, on this uh, rest area and you just, you, you, you might probably find that there's a smudge over, over the period and if you're owning this laptop for a very, very long time, I'm sure the paint will kind of peel off on this. So the material here is kind of worrying for me if you were, if I were to use it for a long term. And the other thing that I, of course, I do not like is that I do not have a webcam on this thing, not even a nose cam on this. And that's kind of reasonable because most streamers will not use the built-in webcam of a laptop as they usually have crappy resolution, crappy details and so on. But the, the other problem is that there's no way that you could mount a webcam on the top because of this slim bezel right here. So the only way that if you want to attach a, an external webcam is that you might need to have a mini tripod on your cable, you know, to show that you're streaming. So these are the things that I find for now on my first impressions of the ROG Zephyrus S. Um, overall, it's a great laptop. 
I can't wait to find out what's the results of using a 9th gen Intel Core i7 processor on this because basically the difference between the 8th gen i7 processor is very minimal. It's basically, it's basically just a faster uh, base and boost clock speed. That's pretty much about it. The architecture is still the same. I'm going to expect the same amount of power consumption and so on on this. But the other thing that's going to worry, worry me about this thing would be its temperatures. Um, let's hope that this doesn't you know, heat up and throttle your gaming experience, whatever. But anyways, I'm going to keep my thoughts positive for now. So yeah, let me know what you think about the RG Zephyrus S uh, down in the comments down below. Throw me any questions so that I can check them out during my review. I'll be sure to read these comments. So um, that's pretty much about it. Give us a thumbs up if you like what you saw. Follow us on the usual social media places if you want to see more about our doings on gadget reviews and so on. Subscribe to our channel and I will see you in the next round. Ciao.